Problem 5.2-1. Draw shear and bending moment diagrams for the beam. Here we have a simply supported beam with a pin at one end, a roller at the other, and a triangular distributed load with a maximum value of 6 kilonewtons per meter. The beam is 3 meters long. Let's do this. I'm going to label this end of the beam as A, this is B. At either and we have a vertical reaction force, and I'm going to solve for those reaction forces using the equations of static equilibrium. Summing the moments at A equal to zero, I have this term represents the uh, resultant force of the distributed load times its moment arm, which is one meter from A, which is the centroid of the triangle. And this term is the reaction force at B times its moment arm, 3 meters. And we get B, the reaction force at B, is equal to 3 kilonewtons. Now summing forces in the y direction, we get our reaction at A is equal to 6 kilonewtons. Okay, I've drawn a free body diagram with the reaction forces, and I've also drawn an axis so that I can draw my shear diagram. And Remembering the rules for a shear diagram, uh, when we have a point load applied, like we have here at A, we have an abrupt jump in our shear diagram. So we're going to jump right here at x equals 0 meters up to 6 kilonewtons. We can get an understanding of what the shear diagram is going to be doing by looking at the distributed load. If you recall, the distributed load is the derivative of the shear, which means that distri the distributed load is the slope of the shear diagram. And we see that the slope is negative because a downward distributed load is a negative load. It's going to be initially steep, and as we move to the right, it's going to become less and less steep. In fact, by the time we get to B, our slope will be zero. So the change in our shear diagram between any two points is going to be equal to the integral of our distributed load, which is essentially the area under the distributed load curve. So let's look at uh, the first one meter. Uh, to calculate the uh, area under the distributed load for the first meter, I'm going to divide it into two parts. I'm going to divide it into a triangular piece and also this rectangular piece here. The value of the distributed load at one meter over is equal to four kilonewtons per meter. This will be useful in getting the areas. The area under the triangle I have labeled with a one is equal to one half times the height, which is the difference between six and four, two kilonewtons per meter, times the base, which is one meter, and it's a negative two kilonewtons because we're pointing downward, and so we get an area of negative one kilonewton. The area of this rectangle which I have labeled as uh, area 2, is equal to negative 4 kilonewtons per meter times 1 meter, that's equal to negative 4 kilonewtons. Add them together, we get negative 5 kilonewtons. So we're going to see a 5 kilonewton drop in our shear diagram from uh, uh, over the first 1 meter. So if we start at a positive 6, we're going to drop down to a positive 1. And the shape of this diagram, because this is because the distributed load is a linear shape, the shear diagram is going to be then a, uh, a quadratic, or, or in other words, it's going to be a parabolic shape. Now, for the next one meter of, uh, of length of our beam, uh, we're going to uh, find where our shear diagram will go by integrating, again, the distributed load. Now the value of our distributed load at 2 meters from the left is 2 kilonewtons per meter. So we can get the area of uh, this triangle 3 is equal to the area of triangle 1 here, which is just negative 1 kilonewton. The area of this rectangle, which I've labeled as 4, is equal to negative 2 kilonewtons per meter. That's the height times the base. 1 meter gives us negative 2 kilonewtons. So the area under the distributed load from x equals 1 meters to x equals 2 meters is negative 3 kilonewtons. So what we're going to see is a drop in our shear diagram, an additional 3 kilonewtons. We're at a value of positive 1, so we're going to drop down to a value of 
negative 2. Now for the last meter of our beam, from x equals 2 to 3 meters, uh, we're going to integrate again under the distributed load. We'll call that area 5. This means our shear diagram between x equals 2 meters to x equals 3 meters will drop an additional 1 kilonewton from negative 2 to negative 3. And now I can finish drawing my shear diagram curve. And now I have my shear diagram. I've now drawn my axes so that I can draw my moment diagram. So what do we know about what this bending moment diagram is going to look like? Well, first of all, at the, on the beam at the two ends, we are simply supported, which means uh, there's a pin and a roller where there's no moment. So we're go our, our moment diagram is going to start at zero and it's going to end at zero. We can also get a lot of information from our shear diagram. Uh, we know where the shear diagram goes to zero. That's going to be a point of a maximum moment in our beam. From the shear diagram, which is the slope of the moment diagram, we see that the slope will initially be uh, very steep. And at the point it goes to zero, uh, the slope will, uh, will be essentially flat. And that's why it's a, a local maximum right there. So we'll start steep, we'll eventually become flat. And then, uh, after we cross the zero point at somewhere just beyond one meter, uh, the slope will turn negative, and it will become more and more steep as we move to the right, but not, not as not as uh, steep as it was on the uh, left side of the beam. Okay, so let's see if we can just kind of draw in what this diagram will look like. Now, if if our shear diagram is quadratic, our moment diagram will be a cubic. Okay, so that's a pretty good approximation of what our moment diagram is going to look like, but it will be very useful to know what the maximum is. Now, the maximum is, we can find the maximum by integrating the shear diagram. And we can either integrate the shear di diagram from zero up to the point where the shear diagram goes to zero, or from x equals three meters back to the point where uh, the shear diagram goes to zero. But either way, we need to know where exactly is that point. To help me out, I'm going to use the direct equation method to find where the shear diagram crosses the zero point here. And I'm going to do that by drawing a free body diagram of a cut section of the beam. And I've cut it from B, the end on the right, to some distance X going towards the left. And I need to know what the maximum value is here on our distributed load and we have a triangular load at the left end it was six kilonewtons per meter and the beam is three meters long and it's zero here on the right so the slope uh, is increasing from right to left at a rate of two times x and the units are kilonewtons per meter I've drawn my internal shear arrow using the positive convention and now I'm just going to sum forces in the y direction and solve for that shear. Solving for the shear, I get internal shear is equal to x squared minus 3, and that's with x going in the direction from right uh, to left. And I'm going to set this equation equal to 0 and solve for x. And that will tell me where this diagram crosses the 0 point. Setting the equation equal to zero, I get that x is equal to the square root of three or 1.732 meters. What does that mean? That means this dimension from the point where the shear diagram crosses zero to b is 1.732 meters. That means the dimension from a to the point where the shear diagram crosses zero is 1.268 meters for a total of three meters. Now, integrating the shear diagram from uh, on the right half of the diagram uh, where the shear is negative, if I integrate that, that will give me uh, the change from this point at our peak in our moment diagram down to zero. So if I can get the area of what I've labeled here as area eight, then that will give me the value of our moment diagram. I could also do the same with the piece on the left here, integrate it, but this turns out 8, this area 8 is actually a little bit easier. I can first calculate this area that I've shown in red called area 6. 
that area is what we call an exoparabolic area. And it's where the, uh, the slope of our parabola goes to zero here. This area is one-third the base dimension times the height dimension. The base is 1.732 meters. The height is this here, that's 3 kilonewtons. So the area is 1.732 kilonewton meters. If I say area 7 is this rectangle, which includes 6 and 8, that's just equal to the base times the height. And I get 5.196 kilonewton meters. So now I can calculate area 8 as simply the difference between the two. And area 8 is the area under the shear diagram. To the right of where the shear diagram crosses zero, I get 3.46 kilonewton meters. That is the height, the maximum height, of our bending moment diagram. And we're done.